Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen meeting with Chinese officials in Beijing this weekend, giving the benefit of the doubt, of the uh, benefit of the doubt rather, to the CCP that they want a sincere diplomatic and economic relationship with the United States. This, despite growing evidence to the contrary, as uh, China has been ramping up global aggression toward the United States under the Biden administration, from surveillance balloons and Chinese police stations in America to bullying U.S. ships in international waters and planes in the air. Joining me right now is former House Speaker and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich and the Gatestone Institute senior fellow Gordon Chang, both accomplished authors as well. Here, their latest books, March to the Majority and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. Gentlemen, great to see you both. I'm so happy to have you. Newt, let me get your take on the field. Who has what it takes uh, in 2024 to deal with communist China? And what do you think this meeting with Janet Yellen tells us? Look, I mean, the Biden administration is either corrupt or lives in a fantasy land. In either case, it's dangerous to the United States. Uh, if Yellen actually believes what she's saying, she's in a total fantasy land. Uh, and when I watch, for example, the Secretary of State, who'd been paid, I think, over a million dollars a year by the University of Pennsylvania with money, which I think came directly from Communist China, uh, I'm not particularly reassured. So I think whether it's on a fantasy front or a corruption front, the Biden administration is enormously dangerous to the survival of America and an enormous asset in the creation of a Chinese communist uh, dominant uh, system. I, I think it's enormously difficult. This is just stunning. What you're saying is stunning. Gordon, how do you see it? Well, on the same day that Janet Yellen arrives in Beijing, you have Xi Jinping giving a one of his let's go to war speeches to the Eastern Theater Command of the People's Liberation Army, the command that will actually launch the invasion of Taiwan. And on that same day, which was Thursday, you have China trying to seize Reed Bank from the Philippines and the South China Sea. In other words, trying to pick a fight. So, as the speaker says, this is going in the wrong direction. We sent Antony Blinken to China. The Chinese humiliate him. We then send Janet Yellen. She humiliates herself. This is really, really bad stuff. Fantasy land, as the speaker said. Well, and, and they've ramped up on Joe Biden's watch, Newt. I mean, and it's incredible to me huh. that these are some of the most serious allegations leveled against a president, all of this influence peddling, and the mainstream media will not discuss it. Although you had a mention of his granddaughter by Maureen Dowd, right? Yeah, look, I, I think you're beginning to see a break in the system uh, because it's becoming so sickening. It's so obvious. Frankly, the research by the House Republicans is so compelling that I think the whole thing is going to break down. And, and I think even for a lot of liberals, watching a president of the United States turn their granddaughter into a non-person, literally canceling her in a way that is, I think, horrifying and lets you know how cold and ruthless and calculating the Bidens are, and also tells you how much you can count on them to be honest about Hunter or about money or you name it. Uh, this, is a, this is the most corrupt administration in American history, surrounded by people who live in a fantasy land in terms of how the world works, and the combination, I think, is an enormous danger to the very safety and survival of the United States. Well, there's also another worry about what Xi Jinping is doing now. I mean, the fact that Chinese nationals' apprehensions at the southern border up 1,300 percent, Gordon. I want to take a break and then come back and talk about this, because I don't know if Xi Jinping is uh, directing these people to come to America to become saboteurs. We'll see. We've got a lot more with House Speaker Newt Gingrich, a former Speaker of the House, and the Gatestone Institute's Gordon Chang. Back in a moment. Welcome back. We are back with former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and Gatestone Institute senior fellow Gordon Chang. Gordon, I mentioned the number of apprehensions at the southern border of Chinese nationals. Over the last year, it is up 1,300 percent. Do you think these people are running from the Communist Party, or are they being directed to come and stay in America until further word? Both. First of all, we're seeing desperate middle-class Chinese. These are generally not poor people, because they can afford to pay $35,000 a head to the Mexican cartels to bring them in. But among them are packs of males of between 5 and 15 who are of military age, not coming with family groups, pretending not to speak English, and engaging in Chinese military rituals like drinking blood. A border section uh, patrol chief said 
that some of them are known to have Chinese military affiliations. So clearly these are saboteurs coming into America to wage war on the United States on the first day that there is war in Asia. That is just drinking blood? Is that what you just said? Yes. Um, one of the Chinese military rituals is to slaughter an animal, in this case, chickens. Michael oh Yan, a war correspondent, has seen this. And they basically, they drink the blood. Um, and this was done in a hotel in Panama after they crossed the Darien Gap from Colombia. Yes, so we know that these are Chinese military coming into our country. Unbelievable. Newt, who in the 2024 field can take on communist China? Trump. I mean, look, Trump's already proven he can take on China. Uh, you know, Xi Jinping was very, I think, intimidated by Trump, uh, just, just frankly, as was Kim Jong un in North Korea, uh, and I think Putin was in, in Russia. Trump understands real power, and he used it. Now, I think there are a lot of other good candidates, uh, and I think that uh, DeSantis certainly has the potential to grow into that. Uh, I think, as you know, I'm a big fan of Tim Scott. I think he has great potential. Uh, and I think in, in some ways uh, that, that you have Vivek Ramaswamy is the most interesting new candidate in the field. Uh, but I think that uh, on the track record, if you compare how Trump muscled our opponents with how Biden consistently is pathetic, uh, yeah. and as I said, it's either corruption or he's yeah. just out of touch with reality, you don't know which it is. Yeah, I remember when uh, Trump hosted Xi Jinping at Mar-a-Lago and dropped the news that we just sent strikes to Syria. That surprised him. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and Gatestone Institute's Gordon Chang, join us next week for our special interview. We will be speaking with former President Donald Trump right here next Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Have a great Sunday, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow on Fox Business. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. This Sunday morning with the race for the White House, with the first GOP primary debate now 45 days away. In the coming weeks, Sunday Morning Futures will be speaking to the 2024 candidates about the issues that matter to the American people. The economy, the China threat, education, corruption in Washington, and a lot more. As President Biden this week touted his economic policy, citing so-called Bidenomics as a centerpiece of his campaign for a second term. According to new Fox News polls, however, the message is falling flat with voters. Overwhelmingly, 60 percent of voters disapprove with the way Biden is handling the economy, which has included trillions of dollars in new spending and plans for higher taxes. The policies have resulted in red-hot inflation not seen in 40 years, with prices on basic essentials spiking and sending interest rates higher, further squeezing American families. The Federal Reserve at this point has raised interest rates 10 times in the last year or so to combat Biden's inflation, which has sent mortgage rates skyrocketing making a mortgage so much more expensive. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is one of the leading candidates for the 2024 GOP presidential nomination, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Governor, it's great to see you this morning. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And I want to start off with your plans, why you should be the man running this country in 2025. We see an economy that is slowing down. We see Bidenomics falling flat. What are you going to do to change this story? Well, I have no interest in managing the decline of this country. Uh, I want to reverse the decline. I think Bidenomics really harkens back to the late 1970s and the malaise of the Jimmy Carter era. People were talking about there was an era of limits. People just needed to be willing to make do with less. And Ronald Reagan said, no, uh, that's not acceptable. We can do better. And I think we're in a similar situation here. Bidenomics, at the end of the day, means you pay more for everything. Your standard of living declines. You have less freedom. But the government has much more power. And they want to wield that power over the economy to advance a very liberal 
uh, po political agenda. Uh, you also see how this breeds corruption because you got to bend the knee to be able to qualify for all these different programs. Uh, it really empowers corporations uh, who want to side with the regime. So I think it fundamentally needs to be tossed out, uh, and I think we need to put our country on a much different path. For one thing, we need to stop spending so much money. You know, you look at the last three plus years, this government has borrowed, printed, and spent trillions and trillions of dollars. And you go back to the COVID lockdowns, you know, that really represented the biggest transfer of wealth from middle class people uh, to big corporations like Amazon and Apple that we've ever seen in American history. That really laid the seeds for the foundation for the inflation that we're seeing. So you have to get spending under control. You have to open up American domestic energy production. We have an abundance of resources. Stop doing the Green New Deal mm. and let's get serious about producing more oil and gas. Uh, you also have to bring this administrative state to heel. The bureaucracy in Washington is totally out of control. Uh, it's exerting power that is not there for it under the Constitution. And we need a president to come in and really, really clean house. And I will do that um, on day one. And finally, I think we need to uh, recognize this experiment with the CCP over the last three decades where they were granted most favored nation status, put in the World Trade Organization. You know, that's been a failure. Uh, we need independence from China. Uh, we cannot subcontract out key aspects of our industrial base uh, to a country that doesn't uh, have our interests at heart and that is our number one geopolitical threat. And we will get yeah. that done as well. And yet Janet Yellen just went to China and bowed to Communist Party officials a couple of weeks after Anthony Blinken pretty much did the same. What are you going to do to stop this aggression from Communist China in your first week in office then? Give us specifics that you want to change with regard to the relationship with China. Will you reverse the uh, most favored nation trade status on China? What else can be done? So I, I favor doing that. I think we probably need Congress, but I would take executive action as appropriate to be able to move us in that direction. Uh, two, I would recognize that China is a threat. This idea of the happy talk that you hear from Yellen, oh, we're just, you know, it's a healthy competition. No, they're the number one geopolitical threat this country faces. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a new commitment to hard power in the Indo-Pacific. At the end of the day, what China respects is strength. Uh, and if you're showing strength and we have hard power to back it up, uh, they're going to be much less aggressive. And my fear is under Biden uh, is his weakness is really inviting China uh, to do more, not just in, in their own theater. We see them doing more in our own hemisphere uh, here in the West. And so there'll be a, a new day on day one. Uh, we're going to recognize the threat for what it is and we're going to take appropriate action. There is no growth strategy in this administration whatsoever for the economy of the United States. I want to hear your growth strategy right now. Governor, you're talking about reversing this decline in America. Productivity is down. Jobs are still strong. However, there were real holes in that jobs report on Friday. And people are wondering if, in fact, we are dancing right into a recession. What are you going to do specifically in terms of the regulatory backdrop and the taxes that are expected to go higher this year? All of the Biden bureaucratic regulations uh, will be tossed out. We're going to rip it all out. Uh, the Green New Deal, all these things they've done, you know, are bad for growth. Um, and we're going to curtail that. If you look at the agencies, Maria, uh, the agencies and government have grown 50 percent since 2019. Is there any American that's somehow better off as a result of that? No, it's causing a negative impact. Uh, so, so we're going to do that. The other thing, you mentioned productivity. Uh, we need to reorient our education system. We need to stop producing degrees and things like zombie studies where kids are going $100,000 in debt and focus on more concrete skills that can be used in advanced manufacturing as we work to recapture and build a better industrial base. We've done that in Florida. We've doubled apprenticeships. Uh, we've created programs in our state colleges so people don't have to go into debt. They can actually get concrete skills and be put in. When you increase productivity, uh, that's one of the best things you can do to drive down inflation. But it really starts with the education system. We need less woke indoctrination and we need more tangible real-world skills applied.
Yeah, and you've done a great job pushing back against woke. We know that. But I'm wondering what's going on with your campaign. There was a lot of optimism about you running for president earlier in the year. But here's this weekend's headline from the Politico playbook. Failure to launch Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' campaign <laughs> to topple Donald Trump has stalled. We are way behind, <laughs> says a top DeSantis PAC official, sounding the alarm. What happened? <laughs> Oh, Maria, these are narratives. The media does not want me to be the nominee. I think that's very, very clear. Why? Because they know I'll beat Biden. But even more importantly, they know I will actually deliver on all these things. We will stop the invasion at the border. We'll take on the drug cartels. We'll curtail the administrative state. We'll get spending under control. We'll do all the things that they don't want uh, to see done. And so they're going to continue doing uh, the type of narrative. I can tell you, uh, we understand this is a state by state process. Uh, we've had incredible support um, in the early states building an organization, signing up the key people that you need to be able to compete in a place like Iowa. We just launched our mama's movement. My wife was in Iowa with Governor Kim Reynolds launching that. Parents and particularly moms. I think you're going to be the secret weapon, both in this primary and in the general election. Uh, nobody has been a better champion for those folks uh, than me. And I would just also point out, you know, my reelection in Florida, we had the greatest victory that any Republican governor candidate in the history of the state had. And yet a few months before the election, I had media saying that somehow my reelection campaign was stalling, that we weren't mm. doing anything. And so we're doing what it takes to win. It's not a national primary. That's not how these things are going. Uh, it's really on the ground in those key states. You got to have the. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media.